Hello Internet! This is the second part of my animation tutorial. If you didn't watch the first part, please check the link to the first part video in the description. So, in the first part of this tutorial, we built a biped system in 3ds Max, which is a biped skeleton, and then we placed every bone of the skeleton inside the 3D model, making it fit perfectly on this alchemist character. Now the next step is to attach all these bones to this 3D model. So when we do an animation, the 3D model will follow all the movements of the bones. So the way that we add modifications to our 3D models in 3ds Max is through modifiers. So, for example, if I want to smooth the model, create more faces in it to make its geometry smooth, then I have to add a smooth modifier. If I want to twist an object, for example, I can use the twist modifier. Or make an ob object flexible, I can use the flex modifier, and so on. In our case, we want to attach the bones to the 3D model, as if the 3D model is a skin envelope to the bones. So we're gonna use the skin modifier. And there are several types of skin modifiers. The one I'm using here is the simplest and the fastest to use. So here's how you do that. You go to the modifier tabs and you look for the skin, skin envelope modifier. After adding the skin modifier to our 3D model, we just have to select all the bones that we want to attach to this model. So now that we added this modifier, you will see the cylinders around each bone. Each bone will have one of these cylinders around it. The red color that you see in the surface of the 3D model means that that colored region will follow the bone wherever the bone moves to. You may also see some surfaces in the 3D model that are blue or yellow in the cylinder area. These areas have less influence from the bone compared to the red areas that will follow rigidly the movements of the bones. And all the other areas that are not colored in red, yellow or blue, when I select this bone, for example, they will not be influenced by that bone. They will not move when I move this bone. So now the very tricky part is to adjust all these cylindric areas so the parts in the 3D model that are red are only the parts that I want to be controlled by this bone. So for example, if the leg moves, I don't want the chest to move. So I have to separate very well the areas that this bone is controlled. So when I'm ready, refining all these regions that are controlled by the bones, then I can start to test some animations. If the animation doesn't work well, I can always go back and redefine these areas that are controlled by the bones. So let's continue.
There are also some parts that are supposed to be rigid, like uh, the alchemist backpack, for example. But somehow they end up being controlled by several bones at the same time. So when the character moves, the bag will be distorted. In this case, is you, what you can do is to select the bag and then detach it from the original 3D model. And then you can create a skin modifier just for the bag and you can select just one bone that will be influencing the position of the bag. Usually the bags or quivers should be controlled just by one spine bone, for example. We can do the same thing for other accessories, like what we did for the bag. We can create a modifier for the grenades in her belt, for example, and then we can specify that these objects will only follow the, the pelvis uh, bone, for example. So when we move her legs, the object will not be distorted. So I think that's all for this part of the tutorial and in the next part we're gonna refine all these attachments, check and fix possible errors and we're gonna start to import our first animations to test. Please like this video to support this channel and subscribe to receive new parts of this tutorial. See ya!